Hello, everyone. My pleasure to prevent, present Apurva Bakshi in conversation with Suzanne Daniels. Thank you, Vinita. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning uh, and good evening from wherever you're joining across the world. Um, it is such a pleasure to be provided this platform uh, with the uh, absolute original, uh, you know, the Indus entrepreneurs uh, who literally built Silicon Valley. And um, I would like to uh, tell everybody that I've been trying to speak to Suzanne for almost three years, and it is today that she was able to spare some time for us. Um, Suzanne, oh, welcome to the summit. Um, you are the original gangster of our tribe, uh, as I call it, uh, and you have developed and produced some of the most iconic and I found breaking fiction and nonfiction shows I have grown up watching. Um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Dawson Creek, Gilmore uh, Gay Girls, Army Wives, Charmed, Project Runway, oh my god, Project Runway, uh, Drop Dead Diva, Jamie Foxx Show, Are You One, Are You The One, Scream, as in the list is endless. Um, interestingly, you joined YouTube to bring high production value, long form, yet data-driven programming to a democratic platform. And um, Karate Kid inspired Cobra Kai, Step Up, High Water, The Boy, Band Corn, The Age of AI, um, and, and the list goes on. Of course, my favorite was the K Katy Perry show, which was absolutely audacious, and we'll talk more about it. But uh, you went on to even uh, creating a big pivot with the pandemic coming in, and I think that's so interesting that, you know, as a platform, YouTube was able to do that in a very, very uh, strategic way and, and a very, in a very sensitive way by, you know, spearheading a global live stream special, uh, uh, you know, an inspirational tribute to class, the, the, the dear class of 2020, headlined by President and Mrs. Obama, um, and a lot of marquee events. So welcome, Suzanne, it's such an honor to sit down with you. I've been super excited to have this fireside chat. And um, should we just dive in? And I just I just wanted to say hello. And how are you doing today? Good morning, Apurva. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm excited to be here. And sure, just dive in. <laughs> OK, so Suzanne, um, MTV, Lifetime, Fox, WB, and then YouTube. And as I see it, you're a, so, you're a serial executive who has literally built and led some of the biggest American studios and then transitioned to head programming for the world's biggest content platform um, up to four days ago. So we will talk about that as well. Um, these are two very different content worlds and any content creator would know the difference because they cater to very uh, different set of audience and 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 one is democratic one is absolutely you have to go by the book and and uh, 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 you know started from the lowest executive to the senior most um what triggered the pivot between the two the broadcast world or the net like, you know the digital platform ott world to going on to youtube and was it strategic or a challenge that you were seeking um, so I will tell you what happened. So I was I was running MTV and we were doing a lot of programming and we had programmed this show, this drama series that I really like called Finding Carter. And we had programmed Are You the One and we had programmed Scream and our ratings re really weren't climbing. They were holding stable, but they really weren't climbing. And one day out of just complete and total frustration, I turned to my head of research um, uh, who's a lovely woman who's now running research at Disney and said to her, uh, where are they? Where is the, where's the audience? Why, why are our ratings not going? Like, these are good shows. I, I don't, I don't, I, we're marketing them. What are we, what are we doing wrong? Where's the audience? She said, oh, they're on YouTube. And, um, and then, um, I basically started watching a lot more YouTube after she said that. And I started working with YouTube creators who I really admire, and um, and uh, they're very they're very can do. They're very self sufficient. They they're very they're really visionaries. So I started working with YouTube creators and calling top creators, doing research into who were the top creators, and calling them into to MTV for meetings. And I developed a series with Tadra Call, and I had some development deals with other YouTubers, and YouTube heard about it. 
And they called me and so I sat down with them and they said, we'd like you to do this for us. And I thought, well, maybe that's, that's, the, next, that's the next frontier. Maybe the next frontier is I work with creators on the platform where, they, where, where their audience is instead of trying to convert their audience to come watch cable television, which I don't know if it's gonna happen. And so I went, I went to YouTube and that was about seven years ago. Yeah, it's it's been an incredible journey. Um, and I understand that, that it, so it was it was not only tapping into uh, working with the creators, but also a new frontier. And um, and was it yeah, exciting? It really, oh yeah, it was really it was really it was really interesting. It was it was such a great journey the last seven years. I because it made me think about my approach to programming in such different ways. Like yeah, I really had to use different muscles, right? You had, no longer did I have to think about time periods, but what's the lead in, what's the lead out? How do I get the audience to Wednesday night at 9 p.m.? That was all gone. It was all on demand. And then I had to start thinking about, well, if it's all on demand, do I think about the content differently than I think about it? If, it's, if I need to drive an audience to it, do I still need to eventize it? And it turns out you do still need to eventize it, particularly in a place like YouTube where where adding another piece of content could sometimes feel like pouring a can of Coke into the ocean. Um, <laughs> so, um, cause there's so, there's so much content added to YouTube every day by creators. So, so yeah, so it's, it's been fun to think about it. And you mentioned the Katy Perry project. That's my favorite project too. And one of the reasons my favorite project is that, um, and I love that you brought that up, is that um, first of all, it was her idea she gets all the credit, and um, and it's because it took advantage of what YouTube can do in a way that almost almost no other project we worked on really did. It was global, it was live, it was a live stream that lasted five days. Um, you know, it brought in YouTube creators and celebrities. It, it just it really like check the boxes of things YouTube can offer in a, in, a, in a unique way as a global platform that I couldn't do on cable television. It, and it was incredible. It, 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 it served its purpose. Everybody was hooked uh, onto it. Um, you've also commissioned very strong female-led narratives. And um, I do know that you believe a lot in research, uh, qualitative and quantitative. Um, you know, uh, Kate, from again, from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and the Katy Perry show, uh, you've used your research to guide your decisions to hone the mandate of building a very progressive and inclusive content slate. Um, how do you think diversity representation has evolved in the world of content creation? Well, you sort of have two questions in there, and you're absolutely right. I do rely on data. I, re I rely on data more at YouTube than I did at broadcast and cable because I had more data to rely on, um, first of all. Um, that there, was, there was nothing, if there was a not, not a surplus of data, that's for sure. Um, uh, so, for instance, when, when they came in and they pitched Karate Kid to me as Cobra Kai, I already knew before they came in that that was a highly searched and valued um, word uh, or title on uh, uh, on YouTube. So I already knew that there, there was an there was a hungry audience for the content um, going into it. So I just wanted it to know that they had a good pitch, which they did. They had a great pitch. Um, and then I knew that there was an audience that if they could deliver a, a good show, there was an audience that was hungry for it, which really correlated. Um, but back to your second part of your question. Um, let's see, it's early and I haven't had my coffee. What was the second part of your question? Uh, diversity. You, diversity. Yes. Right. All right. Good. All right. Um, uh, yeah, no, that's something that's always been really important to me. It's always been really important to me. I've always seen my job as um, I'm in the chair, but it's not about what I like. It's my it's my, my job is to try and program for a large varied audience and, it, and at YouTube I had the opportunity to do that on a global basis, um, whereas the other networks I worked at MTV and CW and Lifetime, um, they were all domestic. So 
So for the first time at U2, and that was a, that was my favorite aspect of the job, really. Um, I got to work on content in um, eight different regions, in eight different countries, and, and, in, and in local languages. And that was so fun and interesting and challenging because you really have to dive into the culture and ask a lot of questions and try and figure out what's going to resonate um, to in order to develop a program in a local language with local stars. And um, and so that there was a big learning curve there for me, and that was just super fun. But yeah, my job is not to develop what I what I think is a good show. I mean, obviously, I want everything to be a good show. That's the goal. But I I I know there's different tastes out there, and and um, uh, I will I I but I and I and I so I've I've always been drawn to different points of view and working with people who are quite different than I am and bringing you know. A different voice to the table, um, so that, so yeah, so that we're promoting diversity, and 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 it's interesting to promote diverse stories. You you you've done that done it for a very long time, and probably a very early starter to it. But how did how did women face as creators in your in your world? Because we all know that it's a it's, it's a pretty male dominated industry as well. It is changing you know, the past ten years has allowed for creators like story and storytellers like me with no background in film and no background no film school education to be able to foray into the business um how how have you observed and, and it, this could be a more of an industry a pan industry question with the rise of the ott's uh in, in a pure long format um move and less much less reliance on ratings versus uh algorithm driven data um, how do you think women creators have fared um, in the past couple of, like, the past decade? Well, again, you're asking a really complex, interesting question, um, and and they and and the two parts of your question are are definitely related in in meaningful way. The 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 proliferation of the streamers um, meant that you could have you could have niche hits for the first time. You did right when you were in broadcasting cable. You were going for the largest possible audience, so you're you're going after the largest common denominator. But when when you when you start to have streaming, you start to rely. You don't you're you, and you're not relying on ratings. I mean, yes, you want views and yes, you want completion time and everything else. But you're driving subscription mostly. Well, on a, on a Netflix or 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 you're driving ad based on an IMDb TV. Um, and you um, and the goals are different, and that allows you to 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 have a show like Never Have I Ever, right? I don't think you could have had a show in Never Have I Ever before the streamers, and I love that show. And um, so the the idea that um, now that you have more content than ever before being made, and more places for that content to live, a, a hit is defined differently. And because the hit is defined early, it, it can be defined in a much more narrow lane. You can you can explore different types of voices, um, and so you 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 get to have a Perva and her show, you know, and and you get to have Never Have I Ever, and you get to have um, you know just a, a whole different um, uh, type of of genres and type of voices. Um, that that would have been filtered out before. Before, yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask something very interesting. I I really want to know what lesson in your professional life took you the longest to learn. Well, that's a that's a great question. Um, I I'm still learning lessons every day. Um, sometimes I think why have I why have I not learned all the lessons already? But um, but I'm still I'm still learning, and I love a learning curve. Um, I think um, I think in my job, the lesson that I'm still that I still walk every day is um, you learn a lot when you're working on programs as long as I have, and you start to have a sense of 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 what might resonate and what might not. But even though I have that instinct or sense. I also believe that my job, is, as I've said, is to support other people's voices and visions. And so 
where I where I try and walk the line of how much I how many notes I give and how much I can support a creator and 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 how much I want to bring my knowledge to the table, but then also allow them to try things differently and to stumble and fail and learn and maybe not fail, maybe stumble onto something that's a new way of doing it that I haven't I haven't done yet. I mean, like, for, let's go back to Katy Perry, for example. When Katy Perry first pitched that show and she wanted five days of a live stream, I literally said something to the to the to the effect of that's a lot of Katy Perry, five days of 24 hours, like maybe it should be three days and um and she said oh no no it really needs to be five days because it needs to grow and you need to have it to be five days because people need to start talking about it like have you seen this thing it's on it's 24 7. you can watch katie perry sleep you know and so i i said okay i wasn't sure she was right but i thought that's what she really wants to do let's support her vision and let's do it and she was completely right she was absolutely right it did need to be five days um, but so I continue to learn every day. That's that's incredible. And and what would be one life lesson that you would want to share with content creators across the world? Um, the young ones, the old ones. Um, to just go for it, like you did. To just go for it and make make the show that that excites them, that they want to watch, that they think their peers are going to watch, that there's more access to being able to shoot something on you know your phone that looks great and edit it yourself on your laptop than ever before, and just start 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 doing it, start making content. I tell writers write, write scripts, write write what you're excited about. And that's amazing. That's that's that is that's a great life lesson um, to just go for it and not rely on everybody else to make your dream come true. Um, yeah, exactly. uh, coming to the funny part, uh, feels like Greg, who is also one of my favorite creators. He, uh, your partner, who created the Office, Parks and Recreation, and The Simpsons. Uh, he wrote for it. Um, does he get your, uh, his funny, he, he definitely uses your funny bone to write his comedy pieces, isn't it? How does that partnership work? It's just like incredible. What a powerhouse couple. How, how uh, does, how do, how do you, how do you guys, how does that partnership work? I really want to know. Uh, I, I think we learn a lot from one another. I think we learn a lot from one another. I think, um, we, we both have to work with, um, people in our role. So he has to work with a lot of executives, whether they're at Netflix for a show Space, Space Force or executives at Amazon for a show um, Upload that's coming out March 11th, season two. I'm going to plug it. Um, and, uh, um, and he has a better sense of where executives are coming from and what their job is and what their role is and how they're trying to help him. Um, and, and, the language they use from living with me all these years and talking to me about it and hearing my thought process and, and approach. And likewise, I have a much better sense of working with writers and what they're going through and how hard their job is, they're, they're, they're writer producers, um, because of my exposure to him. So he once said something interesting to me, like he once said to me that um, what executives needed to know. He, he was frustrated because executive gave him a note about wanting him to s switch something in act two. And he said to me, I'm going to change what, I'm going to go after what the, the essence of the note was from the executive by changing something in act one that will impact the, the effect on act two that, that, that they want me to change. But I'm not going to change the scene in act two but I am good, but, but I'm going to come at it a different way and go after what they're, what they're looking for. And I, I really took that to heart and I thought, that's right. That makes sense. Just because I see something in act two, my job is not to rewrite it. My job is to say, it doesn't feel like it's coming together or that relationship has stakes or whatever I'm going to talk about, but, but allow the writer to, to come at it any way that they want to, um, that, you know, that they believe will best enhance their, their script. So I think, I, think, I think we learn a lot from one another. That's, that's amazing. Um, was there any show that he thought would be a great success and you did not have any hope and he was right? 
<laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a great question. Um, I'm sure I can't think of off the top of my head, but um, we like different kinds of content. So um, he he really loves. I mean, this is this is so. I even hate to admit this because it's so traditional, split along gender lines. But I like romantic comedies. Surprise, surprise. It's probably my favorite <laughs> genre. And and he loves like you know action, graphic violence. Um, so it's, you know, it's a little stereotypical. I'm sorry to admit it, but it's true. You know, it, 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 it's, it's great to know uh, what goes on uh, behind, uh, you know, the strongest executives I know who've created some incredible programming. Um, but we do work together on, um, on really great drama. Um, mm -hmm. Like, um, we both loved watching Succession together, for instance. Incredible show. Incredible show. Yeah, uh, great writing and end to end. Uh, where does your inspiration find its roots? And I'm talking about Suzanne, the 20 year old fresh graduate um, to today. Um, in, in story, I was an English major and um, I just love story and their story in reality television and their story in scripted television. Um, the story in documentary and film. I just love a great story. And it's all about storytelling. So, I remember being an English major in college and thinking, how lucky am I? How lucky am I that I get to I get to read great books and talk about them in class? Like what a what a an amazing experience that I get to do this. I've always just loved story. That's amazing. And and you continue to tell stories till date. So yeah. you're always uh, you know, probably... and I love working with storytellers. Yeah. And and um, so in, in your in your prolific journey um, as an entrepreneur, um, first of all, do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? I, I've never heard that term before, but I love that term. Yes, I would say I, do. I am. My uh, my very, very, uh, you know, my mentor and an extremely inspiring uh, co-chair, Anev and Vanita, actually coined it, um, entrepreneur. And uh, um, in terms of, I really want to know, you just like four days ago quit YouTube. And uh, what really comes next in Suzanne's life? Like programming for the metaverse? Are we, are we going there now? A new frontier? I don't know. It's a good question. Um, I look. I loved working at YouTube. It was a great ride. I learned a tremendous amount, and I got to work with brilliant creators there. Um, so I'm very grateful for my experience there. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the f powers that be at YouTube felt like they could take the resources they were spending on original programming, and um, and put it against other priorities for the company. Um, like they're building YouTube Shorts right now, the TikTok competitor, and um, investing more in in shopping at YouTube and gaming. So um, uh, it just ended up sort of the, they're deciding they didn't want to no they no longer want to prioritize original content, which is which is their right to decide. Um, so um, so what's next? I'm not sure. Maybe for the first time in my life, I'm not sure, but. Um, I am uh, teaching a class in the business of streaming at UCLA Anderson School of Business that starts in a couple of weeks and looking forward to that. And I'm going to consult a little bit and figure out what I'm going to do next. Incredible. We can't wait. We can't Storytelling. Wait. I, I would really want to just stay in that class and, and be, be a fly on the wall and just hear about all the experiences. Uh, okay, we're going to open up the, um, uh, you know, questions for the audience. Uh, and some of them are sending me uh, questions on the chat here. Oh, this is very interesting. So far in the gallery of life, are you the art, the artist, or the visitor? I'm the curator. <laughs> and why? I'm, I get to be the curator. That's a fun part of, 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 of my job. And, you know, when you were talking about how I've worked at different networks, I've worked at different networks, a lot of different networks. 
now, started at NBC, worked at ABC, Fox, you named a bunch of them. But I'm essentially doing the same job the way I see it. I mean, maybe doing it for a different brand or a different demographic, but I'm doing the same job and trying to create content that resonates with people. And, um, and so I see myself as a cur curator doing that. I'm not, I'm not the artist, um, but, um, but I, I, I get to work with all the artists and, and create a gallery. Did you, did you ever want to write yourself? No. How incredible. No, that's, that's it's a, it's, I think I like interacting with people and writing is a, is a lonesome job. Uh, what career advice would you give your kids? With both parents being the, on the frontier of entertainment. How does um, that go? I think my advice to my kids is similar to what we were talking about earlier. My what my advice to you know young people starting out to, to today would be, which is that um, it's like that 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 woman who um, who who wrote the HBO series Girls and did the movie Tiny Furniture. She 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 Lena did that Dunham? movie. Yeah, Lena Dunham. She just did that movie Tiny Furniture like you just made your content she just made it she just wrote something and made it i mean i know it's easier said than done but um and i know that it's hard to get people to help and get financing and but it's possible and it's possible to get your content out there and build a youtube channel and build a website and do it yourself and um and get and get noticed and break through and and look at look at the guys who wrote um, uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, right? Who who came out of nowhere as two young guys from Boston and wrote that screenplay and starred in it. I mean, and won Academy Awards out of the bat. Like, kind of anything's possible. And I think my my advice to my kids is just it's like it's, it's that Nike slogan: just do it. <laughs> Incredible. We have a question from uh, Miss uh, Kirplani. Please guide us on how we can get to your class and learn about streaming content from you. Is that just sign up for the UCLA course or? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's for the Graduate School of Business. I think you have to be a business enrolled as a business school student at, at UCLA. Um, I'm not sure that they allow people just to um, sign up, but I'll find out. Well, I, I will write to my very good friends at Masterclass to just quickly enroll themselves on your list and do a masterclass for all of us adults who are not going back to school anytime soon. So no, I thought it was um, maybe I should do a masterclass or a TED talk. <laughs> yes, definitely. We'll, I'll, I'll nudge, the, the, nudge everybody in the right direction. Um, Suzanne, Variety Hall of Fame inducted you in 2019, and this year you'll be inducted in the Broadcasting and Cable Hall of Fame. Congratulations. I cannot wait to hear more about uh, where you're headed and uh, attend your classes and master classes. And uh, please keep inspiring us because um, uh, you, you're a huge inspiration to all the producers, but especially to um, young girls and women like me who can see you. You're like the walking, talking billboard of what successful programming uh, and filmmaking uh, filmmakers look like. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, do you have any last thoughts that you would like to share with our uh, attendees? Um, so listen, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure, Purva, and I really appreciate it. And you asked really fun questions. And um, good luck to everybody out there. Um, and I, I'd say to the, I'd say my last piece of advice is to the women in the group is don't put your life on hold. I think women put their life on hold when they pursue their career and they think they'll get to it. And you've got to, you've got to just, it's messy. Life's messy and it's not clean. It's not like I'll, I'll get to a certain point and then I'll check that off and then I'll get married and then I'll check that off and then I'll, you know, it, it, it doesn't happen like that for anybody. And you have to kind of 
have your life at the same time as you're pursuing your passion. And 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 I I just see young women and I feel like they 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 don't realize that. And um and I and I and I love and being married and having four kids was a, a, has been such a joy to my life that I just want women to um make sure that they're not putting their life on hold. Thank you, Susan. That was incredible. That was an incredible piece of advice for all the young women uh, to be mothers and uh, executives in the content industry. Um, I cannot wait to meet you in person and give you the warm, warm hug that is due for the past three years, uh, but very <laughs> soon. Please well, I look forward care. to that. Part. Thank you very much I for have, having me. Give our regards to Greg as well. Thank you so much.